Hey guys, welcome to Traditional Bow Hunting and Wilderness Podcast. This is Jason Samkovic, and today we're going to talk about something. It's a question I get asked all the time. Is a 40-something pound bow enough to hunt with? Okay, especially for deer, hogs, that kind of stuff, black bear. Is a 40-pound bow enough to use? And uh, it's a fantastic question, and I see why a lot of people worry about that or wonder about it. But let's... Uh, simple answer, yes it is, but complex answer we're going to get into. So there's some more things that you need to think about. Uh, a 40 pound bow, 40, 42, 45, any of that kind of stuff, they are definitely going to do what you need to do, with some exceptions. My attitude has always been you should shoot as much bow as you can, it finds that balance for you. When I say that balance... I'm talking about can you shoot it enough to practice with it for long sessions and enjoy it? And can you uh, be able to pull it when you're sitting in a stand? If you're sitting down there in a stand freezing your butt off in December with your bow hanging next to you on a hook and your arm's not moving uh, for two or three hours and then a deer comes in, can you pick that bow up and then make that shot on that thing without any issues? Or are you going to be... And you can't get it all the way back and you're fighting and you can't do it or you're uh, fighting and you pull and it collapses on you. These are issues that all contribute to that balance, okay? Um, so when I say shoot as much bow as you can, it depends on that balance. Also comes into play with your shooting style. If you're a snap shooter, comes in, done like that, it's going to be a lot easier to shoot a heavier bow. If you're somebody who comes in and does this and comes in and draws and holds and anchors and stays there for a while and waits and waits and waits and shoots, boom, like that, then you're going to have to be probably a little lighter bow poundage. All of these variables come into play, all right? Most of the guys I know that shoot heavy, heavy weight bows, 70 plus pound kind of thing, most of them are snap shooters, which means they're coming in and they're getting there to bring it back and it's gone like that okay so it's just a bring it back snap and it's gone uh because of the fact that they're not holding that it's easier for them to do most of your guys that are shooting the lighter weight bows are somebody who's going to actually come back and hold and stay stagnant and then release like that whether it's straight up and down or string walking or creeping or gap shooting or whatever your style is is irrelevant you have to find that balance for you and uh, and find what works best for what you're doing now, with that said, I've shot everything from 79-pound recurve. I had a 79-pound Robertson. was the heaviest I went to. The limbs actually broke on it. This was many years ago, but I had a D-lamb on there right before a caribou hunt. So I had to make me new ones. They were 71-pound limbs that I went with. And uh, But, I mean, so I've been up to 79 pounds. I killed four deer with that bow. Is 79 pounds. A uh, bunch of deer with 70 pound, 71 pounds, 67 pound Robertson recurves. Went to longbows with a 67 pound, then went to 63 pounds, then down to 57s. Um, you know, so I've been in a lot of different places myself with bows. And it's going to be interesting here in a minute when I explain to you the results from some of those and what happens. This bow here is my son's. Okay, he's had a lot of bows. This is one of my prized possessions because he's no longer with us, but this was his favorite bow that he had. He's been gone, he passed four years ago now, and uh, so he was 14 when he passed away. But before then, he's you know he killed deer with a compound, he's hunted with a lot of things, but this bow right here was his pride and joy. He painted this himself to make it match like it does with one of my, my first bow I had, my Martin Mamba Recurve, but he painted this. And uh, he shot this bow religiously. He hunted with it. He missed two deer with this bow um, when he was 12 years old. This bow is 45 pounds. <clears throat> 45 pounds at 28 inches. It's a 52-inch ammo bow. And at the time, he was probably only pulling about uh, 26 inches, so shooting about 39 pounds out of this bow. I was completely okay with him hunting with this bow. I had no fears whatsoever of him hunting deer or hunting hogs. He chose to take his compound when he went on that hog trip. Uh, so we didn't bring this, but uh, that was his choice. Uh, very ethical kid. He didn't want to take it because he wasn't practicing enough with it. He felt more confident with his compound. But he did hunt with this. And like I said, this bow, I had no fears of him taking an animal with this bow being in that 39, 40 pound range. There are laws in different states. You might have to look into that and what they are by you. But the weight of the bow doesn't make that much difference. Okay, there's some factors I'm going to cover that are going to make things uh, make it different for you. But let that sink in. I had no problem with somebody that was going to have a short 25 and a half, 26 inch draw 
on a 45 pound bow pulling about 39 pounds and shooting deer with it, I had no doubts he would have been blowing right through them completely. Why? Because of the arrow setups that I built for him. The arrow is everything. Okay, the bow is great, but the arrow is everything. Um, now, as far as the weight, again, find that balance. Keegan eventually, at 14 years old, went to a 50-pound Samic Sage recurve, and uh, he was pulling 27 and a half, so he was like 48, 49 pounds at 14 years old, and he could shoot it lights out, and he could shoot it for, for you know, he could shoot 50 arrows at a time, almost nonstop, out here in the yard out of it. It was a perfect balance setup for him, okay? My bows that I use right here i have been shooting a 57 pound longbow for a very long time 57 pounds and 26 inches that's my draw it has been very good to me even my 63s were good reason i went down a little bit is uh um i just didn't think i needed it anymore you know there's no reason not to and it's 57 is a very happy comfortable number for me and if i go any direction i may go down again eventually i've been having some major like almost arthritis problems in my elbow Hasn't hit me too bad, but it does hit me on the cold days. If I sit in a stand in November, or I mean in October, or December, where it's in a, you know, when you get into the teen temperatures, if I don't draw this bow back every hour, I have what's called a short draw, or not short draw, but I'll have this elbow give out on me. So I'll draw this bow, and if I don't, if I draw it every hour, I'm good to go. You know, and you know, just draw it a couple times each hour, hang it back on the hook. If I don't do that, in a teen temperature type situation, when I go to draw this, I'll draw it. And instead of being able to, I'm actually gonna put an arrow on here, but uh, instead of being able to come back like I do here as a full draw scenario, where for me, when I come into full draw, it's like this. Okay, that's my full draw. Okay, like that. Well, what would happen is I would go just like this. I would go and it would go. And my elbow would give out. My elbow wouldn't support it for me. And I shoot with a slight bent elbow, but I could not. I would draw, and that elbow would come back to me, okay? So that elbow has been an issue for me for the last two years. Um, so if I go any direction, I'll go down lower. But I, I with working out and, and taking care of that arm and doing it, I'm, I'm able to keep going still. But point being, your balance is everything. If you don't find that balance point for your weight, you're going to be in trouble. You'll be overbowed. You don't want to end up overbowed. If you're overbowed, you can't shoot enough to have fun with it. Okay. Uh, now the good news is whatever bow weight you get, anybody can work into it. I see a lot of people say, well, 45 pounds is all I can handle. No, it's not all you can handle. I mean, I know girls, my wife was shooting a 55 pound recurve at her draw length and shooting it out here 30, 50 times in a row without a problem. Uh, she did not start out that way. But she worked up to that, and she enjoyed it, and she enjoyed the challenge of going up more. But as you pull more weight, your body and your muscles will develop, and you'll be able to handle more weight. So uh, that's something to keep in mind. Find your balance for what's going to give you the most draw weight you can have in that balance. If that ends up being in the 40-pound range, more power to you. If you just want to shoot a bow in a 40-pound range, more power to you. Will they do the trick? Yes, they will. Now, the reasons they will, and the only way, the things that make a difference. When it comes to hunting, your scenarios, your bow has got X amount of stored energy in the bow. Okay, and that's all it has. It only has 45 pounds of energy in this bow. Okay, 57 pounds of energy in that bow for simple terms. Let's just use it that way. The more energy I can transfer to the arrow the more effective the arrow becomes in killing that animal. That being said, that's the most important part. The more energy that the arrow can bring to the animal, the better your odds of killing that animal are. There are going to be people, and I'm going to stop you right now before you, oh my God, it's all shot placement. It's all where you put it. It doesn't matter about the punish. It doesn't matter. Just slip it right in there. They're going to go off on me. Okay, It's going to be in all the comments. Listen, we know that shot placement is everything. We also know that we're bow hunters, and I don't care how good you are. I don't care if every shot you've ever taken could fit through a diamond ring just like, you know, Byron Ferguson does. Animals move, okay? They move. Variations happen. Things that are out of your control will happen, and you inevitably will make a bad shot. There's no two ways about it. Anybody tells you, well, I've killed every single deer I shot, I killed instantly. Well, great. You probably killed two deer in your whole life. Point being... 
Things will go wrong and there are variables that are out of your control that you have no part of being able to fix. And if that happens, you want as much energy in that arrow to be able to get through uh, ribs, to be able to get in there to do the job it needs to, to be able to maybe break that offside shoulder on a quartering away shot if you hit it, possibly to get through the front side shoulder if you hit it. You want these variables to be there for you in your favor. The best way to achieve that is get the most energy possible to that arrow so that it can do the job and then transfer that energy into the animal when it hits it. So the bow doesn't have... Um, a, a big job to do. Just transfer energy to the arrow. If your bow is 45 pounds, you're not going to transfer as much as 57. However, a lot of people that shoot heavier weight bows and have for many years, back, you go back 10 years ago, 60 pounds was the average for a man. 60 pound bows. Okay, It would be unheard of to see 10 years ago to see somebody shooting 45 pounds. Um, except for girls. That was a girly weight. Okay. We know that doesn't matter anymore because of the technology and the capabilities out there and the knowledge we have. But with that said, during those 60 pound days, there were a lot of people that did not put enough effort and attention into the thing that mattered most, which is your arrow. Okay, You had guys out there, myself included, shooting 79 pound bows and arrows that were Decent arrows flew pretty well. We relied on big, heavy, five and a half inch long, three quarter inch high feathers to control that arrow. We told ourselves that because our bows are not tunable like a compound is, it's just let the feathers do the work for you. All these variables came into play and they worked for us, but they did not work as good as they can. They did not take that energy and transfer it. Sorry, I still got a little bit of a cold here. Um, they did not use that as best as energy as they could into that arrow. So you had guys that were shooting these bows that were not getting past through shot. 70 pound bow, 60 pound bow. So somebody had a 60 pound bow, they shot two deer and that arrow went and stayed in there that far and the deer runs off. And then they do it again, that arrow stick comes in that far and the deer runs off. They're going, I need more bow weight. I need to go heavier. So here now they're shooting 70 pounds, 80 pounds, this kind of stuff. And now that arrow's going in, coming through or just barely popping out. It was happening. Okay, we had the options there. Now we know so much more about this right here that it makes that bow weight irrelevant. Okay, we know that a properly tuned arrow is way more efficient than an extra five pounds of bow weight. We know that a properly set up arrow that has got high FOC in the front, skinny diameter shafts, uh, you know, narrow three to one type profile heads if you want. But we know when you put all these things together to create that, that arrow becomes much more efficient. I would say that the difference being if a 60 pound bow is shooting a fat shaft and a standard FOC arrow and it is relying on the feathers to tune that arrow and get it controlled. Remember most traditional shots on animals are under they're under 15 yards. You take an eight yard shot on an animal and your arrow may if your arrow is not tuned well and not set up properly that arrow might not be going straight before it hits that animal. You might be hitting that animal still sideways like this as it does and it's going to rob energy. So all these variables so if you got a 60 pound bow shooting a mediocre setup arrow and you have a 40 pound bow with a premiumly set up arrow, perfectly tuned, set up correctly, higher FOC, perfect weight ratio, good three to one head, that 40 pound bow will outperform that 60 pound bow with that other weight. Oh my God, he's lying. Now he's telling me I get to be outshot by 40 pound guys all day long, blah, blah, blah. Here we go. It's coming. I understand this is controversial. I understand there's a lot of debate to this. All right. Take it for what it's worth. Take it for whatever level you want to. But you see this gray here that's coming in? Okay. I've been doing this now for almost 30 years. It's been a long time shooting a traditional bow. And in that time, I'm not one of those people that kills a deer a year, a deer every other year. I mean, my numbers of animals that I've personally killed is getting way up there. Probably getting somewhere in the closer to the 200 range than the 100 range. It's getting up there, a lot of it. So I have a lot of experience with it. On top of that, I have a lot of friends that I've been part of blood trails with that I know. I know what they shoot. I know how it goes. I talk to them. So, I mean, that pool of study is thousands 
or so of animals that have been shot with traditional bows. I'm here to tell you, this is your key to shooting lightweight bows. Without this, your bow may not be a productive bow. If you take a 40 pound bow or a 45 pound bow, whatever you want, and you don't have your arrows and you don't pay, or you don't pay enough attention to setting up your arrows correctly, you will get a lot of very poor performance out of that bow. You will start getting that where you shoot a deer and the deer's running off and that thing's wagging like this, sticking out of there because you only got that much penetration. This stuff is coming. Okay, you want it where you're blowing all the way through, just like that, boom, and you're going right through animals with a lightweight bow. This is everything to you. We said, the bow's job is to transfer energy. A 45-pound bow can transfer 45 pounds of energy to an arrow. If the arrow cannot accept, and again, I'm not being very scientific, we're going to keep it simple. If the arrow cannot take all of that 45 pounds of energy and transfer it downrange to that animal, you have lost efficiency in there. How do you make an arrow accept all the weight that the bow can handle? Shoot enough arrow weight is one of them. Okay, I much prefer something in a 10 to 12 grains per pound range. Okay, I don't know what mine are anymore, but I shoot a 57 pound bow with a 720 grain arrow. 12 point, I don't know, I don't even know what that is. I have no idea. I'd have to look that up and see. Um, but it's heavy, and I like it that way. I've shot 700 to 780 grain arrows for the last 20 years. I don't go anywhere else. I don't want to be below 700 grains, period. Even if I drop down to like a 51 pound bow, I'm probably going to still be 680, 700 grains. I like that number. Um, but you want a heavy enough arrow that's going to work for you. We measure that by what we call grains per pound. Okay, um, is how that's done. So in simple terms, if you're looking at a minimum of a 10 grain per pound arrow, if you're shooting a 400 or a 45 pound bow, you want a minimum of a 450 grain arrow to come out of that bow. Okay, and uh, so if you go to 11 grains per pound, you're going to be like a 500 grain arrow. You see what I'm saying? So it's grains per pound of bow weight, grains of arrow weight. Per pound of bow weight that you're pulling is how you kind of think about that. And I like a 10 grain per pound minimum. I think I'm up there. I don't even know. I think I'm like 13 or whatever it is. I'm, I'm not quite sure. But that weight is going to be able to absorb that. When you shoot a bow and you take a bow and you shoot and that bow is loud, especially with lighter arrows, it's because that's lost energy. What makes a bow quiet is an arrow heavy enough to absorb all the energy from that string. There will be people that will be arguing this with me. Ignore that, okay? Or listen to it if you want to. I'm telling you from a long time of experience that a heavy, and I'm not saying you got to shoot an 800 grain arrow out of a 400 pound bow or a 40 pound bow. I'm just saying, make it heavy enough so that it can absorb the energy being transferred there. If that bow is loud and twangy, then you're losing energy that's lost that the arrow cannot take, okay? The arrow is too light to be able to absorb the energy from that bow. Also, when you're building an arrow, high FOC is a great thing. It is not mandatory, okay? If you have a perfectly tuned cedar arrow with a 125 grain head on there, it will do the job flawlessly if the arrow is tuned. Will it do it as good as a higher FOC arrow? No, it's just not going to. The higher the FOC, the better it's going to be. Better for tuning, better for penetration, better for all those things. I can do a whole other video on that. I, I probably already have a bunch of times. Probably got two or three videos on it. Maybe I'll do another one. We're not going to go down that rabbit hole here today. But we are going to make it where you want an arrow heavy enough to be able to absorb the energy coming out of your bow. 10 grain per pound minimum in my opinion. More weight forward, if you can, the more weight you can have forward, the better. The broad head, the wider head you go or the more blades you add to a head, the more resistance you will get, the more energy robbed from this arrow will be used during that penetration and it will be lost so you're not as efficient. Two blade heads, I love them. You want to go a narrower if you're shooting lighter weight for deer, you're probably still just fine with any broad head you want out of a 40-something pound bow. It's not going to really make a difference. Start going after hogs, things like that. Bears are even very thin-skinned, and you're not getting through a leg, a shoulder blade on a bear. I don't care who you are and what you're shooting. So forget that process. So on a bear, 
Even a wide broadhead is going to work just fine on a bear. Uh, when you get into hogs, you know, hogs got a lot of meat on them. They got grizzle. They got the shield. They got a lot of crap going on. They're very dense animals uh, where a bear is more of a blob of jelly, basically, is what it is. It's very soft and easy. Um, deer are very easy to get through, thin-skinned and easy. Hogs are a whole different ballgame. But so with them, you want to go with a narrow head, long profile, three to one, that kind of thing in those lighter weight bows so that you get to maximize the efficiency of that arrow. Okay, I hope that all makes sense. Then the key thing is that arrow must be tuned to your bow. Okay, you have to take the time to tune it correctly. Bear shaft it, paper tune it, whatever you want, but you need that arrow flying right because if that arrow is coming in at that animal and that arrow can come in straight, and go right through, just like that, and zip right through, you're good. Look at even here. So if I had to make that same size hole here, and I shoot, you can see it goes right through until I stop it, okay? Smooth and easy. If I try to, you know, you try to wobble it through there, it doesn't work. It doesn't go through. It just snags, okay? Same thing's applying. If this thing's hitting that on an angle, when it hits that target, it has to try to wiggle through like this, and you're losing so much energy. If that arrow can come out straight and go straight through, it's got the efficiency you're looking for. And if you're shooting the light, the lighter bow you go to, the more valuable your arrow setup becomes. Will a 40-something pound bow kill everything? All day long. Is it functional? All day long. Is it ethical? All day long. But it is your responsibility to make sure your arrows are getting peak efficiency out of that weight. You shoot a 60 pound bow, you can get away with a lot more. You should still make sure everything we're talking about is there for you, but you can get away with more because you have more energy transfer to that arrow. Okay. Again, I was telling you, I've shot 79 pound bows. Those four deer I shot with that 79 pound recurve, I never passed an arrow through one of them. Cedar arrows, actually very heavy cedar arrows, 650 grain, and then 125 grain broadhead on them. I had to fight like crazy and had, you know, like people searching for me to find me the heaviest cedars they could. Went to Doug Furs. I shot a lot of wood arrows then. I never passed an arrow through a deer, including a button buck out of those, that I've, I've never passed through with 79 pounds on there. Now, some of them were bone hits, things like that, but my window of a 79-pound bow is only for a deer. Never had a complete pass-through. Most of them were, well, they would pass through both sides, but I, when I say pass-through, never had that arrow go in, out, and stuck in the ground on the other side. They were all somewhere you could see, even if it was that much, shafts sticking out of that deer when I shot them. Okay, something to think about. In my 71 and 60 pound recurve days, the 67 pounds and 71 pounds with those two, I did get some pass-throughs, but only about probably three or four out of 10. Okay, when I started shooting longbows, I started paying way more attention to my tuning of my arrows and setting them up a lot more. Funny how I went from those 79, 71, and 67 pound recurves, and I went down to uh, six, uh, 63 pound longbows, R&D style longbows, and I started blowing through a lot of everything. Once I really started getting into my arrows and started getting into FOC, it's a rare day I have an arrow stay in a deer now anymore at all, unless I'm hitting bone. And I love that shot where I go through right behind a shoulder on a quarter and away. I smash this in and break the opposite shoulder. That deer's running off. That arrow's there. He snaps it either way. But I've not only double lung put it through there and broke, exited out the body and broke that other shoulder. And he's plowing his game over. Okay, which that's my number one shot. I, I make that shot more than any other one. So my pass-through ratio might be a little less, but it's because my broadhead just broke that opposite shoulder and is, is sticking out in the skin that much on that other side. So it does what I want it to. And I also shoot a wide broadhead at one and a half inches. Point being, without getting off on tangents, this is everything to a lightweight bow shooter. And there is nothing wrong with shooting a lighter weight bow. Do it all day long. Find what balance is best for you. Your ability to shoot it regularly, to let that bow match your shooting style and how long you hold and what you do. Can you shoot it in cold weather? Are you comfortable with it? And then match your arrows for it. Thanks for watching.